Hey guys. Welcome to couple. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. It's hard to spin minimum wage and healthcare as bad things. Since Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez upset victory last month, there's been no shortage of pearl clutching over Democrats swinging too far to the left. Pundits and centrist Democrats have been warning that by having actual goals and policy ideas, candidates only open themselves up to attacks from Republicans. This has been the Democratic Party's approach to elections for a few decades now, and remarkably, it hasn't stopped Republicans from labeling them communists and traitors and announcing that everything from libraries to free school lunches are harbingers of Soviet-style gulags. Even James Comey offered the unasked for advice that Democrats should keep playing to the middle in order to beat Trump at the polls, as though that weren't the exact strategy in the 2016 election. Sure enough, now that there's a Democrat with concrete values and goals, Fox News is taking aim at her. Unfortunately for Fox, all their best efforts to undermine Ocasio-Cortez's positions just end up showing how reasonable those positions are. So when Daily Caller editor Virginia Crudo went to see Ocasio-Cortez stump for Cori Bush's congressional campaign to see what the fuss was about, of course Fox News invited her on to help them better understand the enemy. Cruda tried hard to give a sinister veneer to the event, but instead she managed to present a strong case for why politicians like Ocasio-Cortez are seeing victories across the country. They say things, they talk about things that everybody wants. They talk about education for your kids, healthcare for your kids, things that you want. And if you're not really paying attention to how they're gonna pay for it, or, you know, the rest of that, it's easy to fall into that trap and say, my kids deserve this, and, you know, well, maybe the government should be responsible for helping me with that. It's worth remembering that neither Fox nor most conservatives ask how the US will pay for increases in military spending or historically huge tax cuts for billionaires but those are certainly realistic places to free up money for programs that benefit everyone. And how, exactly, did she feel when she heard the beguiling suggestion that no child deserves to die of preventable illness if their parents can't afford health insurance? I was mostly uncomfortable, Pruda said, because I was surrounded by a group of people who were talking about how they had gotten involved, because they were tired of being angry all the time.